All right guys, so today we're working on the BMW X3 E83. And this thing has a dry shaft that's bad. The carrier bearing or something's gone out. So it's shaking the whole console. Today we're gonna fix it. Uh, we did find a few other issues with this thing that's gonna have to be addressed for it to be driven. So let's go over that real quick. Then we're gonna get into the job. Okay, so we have the new dry shaft. This is, this is a complete dry shaft with, um, with the center carrier bearing and everything made all together. And when we went to buy the separate pieces, the carrier bearing is so separate, we didn't really find that. So if this comes apart for sure or not, then this is supposed to come with the new Guibo bushing. It does not. And I'm pretty sure this thing has a Guibo. So there is that. The next thing is we put new tires, new control arms on this thing here a while back. By a while back, I mean a few months ago. And I'm no, I'm not exactly a, a rocket scientist, but I'm pretty sure that's not good. It's down to the cords. The other side's worn a little bit. Um, so before this thing go back on the road, this is my mommy's vehicle, right? Everybody says your daddy's truck. That's my mommy's car. And uh, she's been driving the Sequoia and it's scary to me. So we need to get this fixed, but I got to wear some tires and figure out why this thing is doing that. I thought we streamlined it, but I don't think we did now that I think about it because it wasn't wearing anything before. So there is that. Um, let's go to the back here. Let's zip this thing apart and see what we got. Yep. Okay, so we got our 13 mil, our big impact. We're gonna pull these two plates. And you notice what we did at first, we popped the exhaust hangers off. The exhaust is sitting down on our stand. And because if we take the collector bolts out, everybody knows those are gonna break off. And we don't play that stuff, so. So if we could do it without it. If not, we'll break them off, but you know, whatever, I suppose. there just for a second. All right. We'll set those down, find somewhere to put our bolts and we'll be right back. All right, so next we're gonna pull down a tin foil. So we got a tin here. Got a tin here. One here. A little dirt for you. And last one's up here. And then we're just gonna throw our bolts in our tray. We're gonna set a ratchet down and we're gonna wrestle, wrestle this thing out of here without bending it. Hopefully it comes out without having to take those rear arms up. But I love dirt. I love it. There we are. Let me grab our little Makita light. Wherever it got off to you right here. And let's see. Let's see how it's gonna go. We got audio? Yeah, we got audio. Let's make it sure. Let's make it sure. Okay, let Philip come on this other side over here. We're gonna show you what's going on here. Here's the Guibo bushing. It actually looks really good. What the problem is gonna be, come back from this way, I'll show you. It's gonna be this guy here is what, that's a no-go, right? It's very rare, usually the time that goes bad, the center, the Guibo is toasty, but 
We might have got lucky. So I might have replaced this already. And uh, yeah, so we got two 13s here. We got some e torques back here. We got four of those. We got to take three 18 mils off on the front. So let's get her done. What we did here, Philip scaffold up in the car, put it in neutral because I forgot to do that. Because you got to be able to turn the drive shaft. We'll have them come around here. We'll show them the back first. There's four e torx bolts. You just take one out, rotate the drive shaft by spinning the wheels, take the next one out, do all four like that. Real easy. Going back on this side, we'll shift the light around here. Up here, on this end, we took all three nuts off of the three Guiva bolts or the drive shaft bolts. And once we take the bearings out or the center support, which are all 13s, we'll wiggle that. Then we could just finger pull those bolts out. We'll be good to go. I mean, in theory, in theory, that sounds great. So this factory shaft actually has the nut still on it. We might have to get up in there and loosen that. Interesting. All right, we'll be back on. Okay, so finally they're a little bit hard to get up. I've never seen that hard to get out of the Weevil before. Um, we just had to use the pry bar and just push them out. Weird. But that's done. We're gonna pull down The whole shaft, perhaps, maybe. We're still gonna have this still stuck in that back. Why is it stuck on there? Well, nobody knows. Nobody knows, but it's not anymore. So here we are. Now, see, those that U-joint's toast. You can barely move it. A lot of times you get like rusty dust around them. Center one's good, it's got some play in it. It's a little rusty on the end. And then our main culprit is, that's a, that's a no-go. It's actually totally ripped out, you can see there. So, all right, let's fit the new one up. We'll be right back. A little struggle getting it back in here. It wasn't too bad. The fact it's on a lift makes it a lot easier. So we got all three gu guibo bolts tightened down, the two carrier bearing bolts tightened down, in the three or the four e torques on the back, all done. Now we do have a greasable nipple there, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's full, and it is full. We'll get it back off. There's another question. There we go. I just want to make sure that was full. A lot of times you get ball joints and stuff, and it's not, and we don't want that running dry. That's probably only the grease fitting for the slip joint. But, better be safe than sorry. So now we're just gonna reinstall our tin foil tray for our two brackets in that hold the exhaust up and chassis support and we're ready to go. Other than needing tires and hard telling what else. But yeah, we're gonna do that. We'll come back when we're all done and see if she's gonna run. Okay, so everything's back up. Really not that big of a deal. There again, you have, we have a lift. If you lay on your back on the ground, I've done this job many, many times. It is possible, but it sucks. It's better on X3 because it sets higher. We've done this on E39, E46. Um, definitely not a fun job. We got lucky. The Weibo looks perfectly fine. Um, and nothing came apart with the center drive shaft. If you keep driving that and it's bad enough, 
in theory, it could break that loop and come apart and bust up everything in here. On this one, it can't really hit the gas tank because the gas tank's so far back. Uh, it definitely break a lot of stuff though, and you don't want that going on. That's gonna be it, guys. It's all for the E83 X3 drive shaft extravaganza. We'll see you back very soon with another video.